In today's episode of the Pathmonk um, Presents podcast, I have an interesting guest here with me today. I'm with Michael Chmark, and he is heading over from Blast PR. And it's quite interesting, folks. Very often we have, um, you know, uh, MarTech tools on the show. We have um, digital uh, marketing agencies, SEO agencies. And today we want to take a little bit of a different stance. So we have Blast PR here to basically have a look into how PR uh, is supporting B2B software companies, most of you guys are working in B2B software out there at the moment, um, or even founders of companies. Uh, so we want to jump into, into that topic with Michael today. So Michael, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on. I'm looking forward to our conversation. Very cool. So um, maybe give us a rundown. What is uh, Blast PR all about? Sure. So Blast PR is a communications and public relations firm that focuses our efforts on working with B2B technology companies, working with media, working with analysts, uh, shaping messages, making sure that you're putting your best foot forward um, when you're speaking with audiences who truly matter these days. And, and in the world of technology, you, there are scores of audiences you have to worry about, whether it be media, whether it be investors, whether it be analysts. Uh, so we actually help you put your best foot forward so that we can help translate the, that information, the things that you do well, and, and to put those messages typically in front of media who are uh, reporters and editors that we work with across the globe. And, and then more importantly, how do we, once a story runs, how do we work with you so you can merchandise that coverage so it actually becomes like a living, breathing asset as opposed to just something that sits on your server. So we're in the business of reputation, we're in the business of trust, we're in the business of ultimately, what are we trying to do to get people to purchase your product or get to know your brand? But it's certainly a two-way street and we work with our clients to work that two-way street as best as possible. Mm -hmm. Makes a whole lot of sense. Um, maybe tell me a little bit about the types of companies that you're working with. Like who is sort of benefiting most from an engagement with Blast PR? Like what is the sort of maybe the size, the industries, the products, maybe give us an insight. Oh God, if you had asked me that question five years ago, it would have been so focused on like the B2B technology that was more professional services and technology players. But as our industry has grown and evolved, I mean, you look at a company like Domino's Pizza, they can be considered as much a technology company as they are a pizza delivery company. So we really try to work with brands and with companies. We have a deep specialty in the advertising technology and marketing technology space. But we work with clients in such areas as financial services and education um, and, and advertising and in creative and in retail. Um, and we really look at different ways to help showcase the messaging um, and the positioning of a brand in the marketplace so that they're really putting their, I use the term best foot forward um, out in the marketplace as possible. Um, that all of your listeners, if they're in technology, they know that it's a very crowded marketplace for any industry and in every sector. And so we can help create some positioning and some strategy that actually sets you apart um, so that you're actually creating a visibility, a visible name for yourself and one that really makes a difference in the marketplace. So it's not just about awareness, but we also really want to know is like, what are we doing to help get the phones ring, the email boxes filled up and the cash registers ringing? That's what really matters to us. Yep, makes makes complete sense. I think positioning, it's interesting. It has been a lot actually in the show and a lot of SaaS founders that were on the show are deeply, deeply involved in these topics because, you know, if you slightly position the SaaS kind of wrong in the wrong category, people get it wrong, compare it to the wrong tools, you're already kind of lost at the first at the first steps of the battle. Right, and, and, and inevitably what you have to realize when you're a, whether you're a C-level executive or you're a technologist, um, you have to make sure that you translate your technology in a way that a lay person can understand. Um, I know my mom is not listening to this podcast, so I can say that honestly, as like I ask our clients, um, be able to communicate your technology so that my mother can understand it. That can be a really hard proposition for people. They're so in-depth and ingrained in terms of how their technology works on a day-to-day -day basis. They talk about the platforms they use. They talk about the systems and the engineering. At the end of the day, you have to communicate not just the process of what a technology does, but you have to communicate its impact and its results in a way that someone can understand it who may not know what your business is about. And so we, we, we work with clients a lot in that direction um, to communicate what they do. I mean, I have point to a great example that we have a company that we just worked with that just completed a series B round um, 
but we had to make sure that we communicate what they do in a way that a journalist can understand it, uh, the lay person can understand it, an investor can understand it. And talking the language of the clients isn't always enough. So you sometimes have to translate things into a way that can make the conversation a little bit more meaningful and impactful, provide examples of where that proof is, and doing it in a way that you're not just selling. Um, oftentimes we hear technology companies, in, they intermingle public relations and sales together, and we really try to distinguish the two. Sales is about selling, PR is really about educating. So we're really in the business of helping our clients educate their stakeholders about why their technology matters, what the impact is, and how do you try to keep those conversations moving forward? And it's, it's a big difference between marketing, advertising, and branding. But we, we, we play in all those spaces. So we have to be mindful about how all the pieces play together in the sandbox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so interesting. Like, I think at least uh, you know, on, on the experience that we're on the, on the podcast, I think PR hasn't always been, let's say, on the tech founder's first mindset, but it starts to really re-emerge as a topic given you were describing all the tech companies coming out and you really have to position yourself yeah, in a way that it's easy to grasp and easy to understand the difference. Here's the way that I often find it. And I'm sure that your listeners and the people who follow you, um, certainly they're following all the things that are really big in the industry, like AI and machine learning. The thing about public relations, which is so interesting to me is that you can't automate trust. You can't automate reputation. Those are things that are human conditions and those require real people with real counselors behind you. you. It forces technology companies to sometimes take a step back from their technology to say, okay, what are we really doing here? Yeah, yeah. And when you do that, you usually can uncover some new opportunities, some new stories um, and some new ways of shaping what you're all about. And it opens up some great conversations. And so that's kind of what we're in the business of doing with our clients is that we find ways to start new conversations in a way that's not sales driven. It's all about education. Okay. Who would be typically, you know, reaching out to you guys? Is that like a, a business owner because they kind of know they're sort of sailing in the wrong direction? Is it a CMO? They just need, you know, an outside opinion. Is that maybe a product marketing manager? Like, you know, where, who's reaching out? Okay. It's, it's all of those and more. We have C-level executives who reach out to us. Sometimes it's a matter of a CMO where it's an opportunity that's looking as a growth opportunity. Um, we just had one company call us recently that says, hey, we're about to launch our Series A funding. What can you do to help us? Um, we work with companies at all different levels of their maturation. It could be as far as early as the infancy um, of a product or a service or an idea. And we can actually help them to say, how can communications help foster mm -hmm. the uh the inbound leads and how do you foster the growth of, and the idea all, to, all the way to companies that are fully mature. Um, we also have companies that call us when um, a crisis hits their, hits their daily operations, whether it be um, technology that falters, whether it be rogue employees. We've had, a, that could be another podcast entirely about employees gone wild, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, no, we, we help deal with a lot of different issues with a lot of different executives everywhere from CMO, CEO, information officers, technology officers. We're getting a lot more calls these days from risk and compliance officers because they're recognizing the relationship between risk and reputation. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's quite a gamut. And that's, again, that's one of the more fascinating elements of our business is that they all have this central currency of trust and reputation around them. So um, it's always interesting to see how connected or in some cases disconnected a company is um, because they're, they don't have all their ducks in a row and all the things that you'd think that would matter to a company. Yeah. What would you say before we're moving on, what would you say is like a typical or maybe the most common mistakes that you see like tech founders, SaaS founders, or, you know, CMOs doing in their perception of PR? Like what is the like most common misunderstandings uh, about PR? The, the first and foremost is that you're a journalist who's interviewing a, a C-level executive on technology. They're not going to buy your product. They're not there to buy. Think of a, a journalist as the conduit between the audience who, the, who follows that journalist and the, the journalist who's interviewing that C-level executive. It's just a conduit. So you have to make sure that you're communicating, going back to the idea, keep things very simple, 
Um, don't try to push the sales envelope down. You're not driving into fourth gear and trying to close a deal. Um, so you really have to, what I would say that most important is that you got to know who you're speaking with. Uh, most most C-level executives in the technology space have a real difficult time being able to distinguish that a journalist is not there as a sales tool. Um, they're there to help educate their audience about why you as a company matter. So that's first and foremost is the thing that I see most in the marketplace. And, and then number two, um, unfortunately, we see a lot of companies that um, a C-level executive or a C-level team, they don't properly communicate their message well. Um, again, it's that idea of, of sales versus education. Um, and in some instances, you have companies that are over-promoting. And for as much as you're trying to, as a technology company, for example, that you wanna to try to get investors to get interested in you, if you over-communicate and you oversell, you can actually be causing yourself a disservice. So you have to know a cadence of what's right to communicate. When is it right to communicate? How is it right to communicate? If you're using social media, whether it be LinkedIn or another platform, what is the right protocol to follow? Um, I've seen uh, more than the fair share of CEOs and C-level executives that try to overpromote their company and then they shoot themselves in the foot. Mm. Um, and then they're, they're in crisis mode and then they have to do a lot of backtracking. Um, so it's a really, a lot of it is about preparation. Um, mm -hmm. we're, it's almost like, I, I like using the example of like, we, when we work with clients, we look at it as almost like a restaurant. It's like when you go to a five-star restaurant, you have the linen, you have the white tablecloth, you have the great service. But if the kitchen and all they're doing is microwaving food and putting it on fine china, um, mm -hmm. your customers are a lot smarter than that. And you don't want to be putting microwave food on china going into a restaurant. So we make sure that the front of the house is just as important as the back of the house of a client so that their messaging and infrastructure is right. And in many cases, we won't go to market pitching a journalist on behalf of a client until that stuff is done correctly and that we feel we're in a good spot. Yeah. Is that what the, the picture that came up in the in the podcast quite recently was the, the idea of typically software companies tend to communicate the plane and not the holiday destination, right? <laughs> a great example. And not only are they... The, the holiday destination is that you also have to remember that planes fly every day to random cities too. That's what keeps them in business. And so sometimes what we like to work with clients is, is how do you, it's not just about measuring milestones. It's about measuring the intangible assets of your organization. So there's technology, there's systems, there's processes, there's people, which as a technology company, it's amazing to me about how many companies lose the grasp that people form the company and not the technology. Going back to that idea I shared with you about how reputation is not AI driven and that trust is not AI driven. Um, people are assets, they are not expenses. So as a result of that, we make sure that we merchandise and extrapolate all the assets that people offer of companies. Um, and so to your point, planes fly to random cities, but those are those little flights that they do on a day-to-day -day basis. Those are the, the bread and butter of airlines. So we as a company, when we're working with a client, we have to say, okay, what is your everyday process? What are your milestones? And how do we package that in a way that keeps people interested in you? Very good. Um, let's switch gears slightly, right? I would love to sure. learn a little more, a little bit more about how Blast PR is actually thinking about growth. Like what would be sort of, you know, how does somebody get to know about Blast PR? What is the journey that they are going through in order to get started? Well, in many cases, clients are often looking for PR firms based on reputation and referral. Mm -hmm. And so we often find that our best client leads come from other clients. Um, I invite your listeners uh, to look at www.blastpr.com to get an idea of some of whom our clients are. But really, we, we, we find that our best clients come from people who either hear about us from working with the clients or have a direct recommendation and a network with other clients that we've worked with in our 20 plus year history. The beautiful thing about that um, is that just when I was talking about the idea of reputation and trust not being automated, uh, tr reputation and trust are long form terms of currency for us. And so we can, I remember having, hearing about a client that we secured that someone worked with us 10 years ago, but they still remembered us <laughs> 10 years later to hire us. 
I mean, that's powerful for us. Um, but at the same time, we're like any other business is that we have to make sure that we remain mindful that, hey, we are a business and we have we can't just rest on our laurels just to say that it's our way or the highway. So we make sure that we're getting out in the open doing things like this um, to listen to people um, putting out some outward thinking and some thought leadership on our own. So it's like we follow our own our own advice is like we want to make sure that we're trying to make ourselves visible. Mm -hmm. So that people can see our thinking, they can hear what we're about and hopefully see it's a right fit. Ultimately, though, I think the way that that we grow and how agencies grow is not to just follow like the flavor of the month that everybody's in that, that often follows in the world of marketing. It's like a, we try to look and see like what's a step ahead of us or even two steps ahead. Mm -hmm. And so that we can start maybe kind of postulating some ideas looking for clients that are maybe in a particular sector that like we see is going to potentially grow um, and then trying to find some ways to put some blast PR finesse into it to show that we really we really know what we're doing and more importantly we've got some history to show a, a CEO or a CMO of like hey we've got our we've got some good thinking for you and here's why um, a great example is that we just met with a company um, that's doing a lot of work in the automotive sector Mm -hmm. um, it's not a place that we've played a lot before, but we've been able to tap the history of other technology plays that's now starting to get more popular in the automotive world. And so we're able to draw on history and some heritage of like five, 10, 15 years for an industry that's now starting to use some of the things that are kind of part of legacy things of our agency. Mm -hmm. And so that to me is what really one of the exciting things about our industry is that we're able to kind of see where new industries, new sectors are evolving and um, try to get ahead of those curves as much as possible. Very interesting. Um, since we slowly, Michael, coming to an end of the, the interview already, like we deep dived into the world of Blast PR, your perspective on, on it, and also its importance for uh, specifically all the SaaS founders and, and marketers that are uh, listening out there. Um, maybe let's launch into a rapid fire questions to, to wrap it Go up for, for it. today. Are you ready for it? Go Very for good. it. What is the last book you read? Last book, what is it? It's called, What Color Is Your Parachute? Okay. It's actually a book about making sure you look at your different, uh, your career and you inventory where you are to see what your future holds for you. It's very fascinating. It just What's happens one? to be on my, my desk here, so it's even funnier. <laughs> oh, good. I mean, that's a good proof that I actually read it. Um, what is one single thing that your company is focused on at the moment the most? Uh, making sure that our clients are continuously focused on being in the right forms of media that matter to them. Mm -hmm. So, and if you speak to editors and reporters in our, in our core sector, it's nice when they tell you that Blast PR is a trusted source. So it was that idea of trust again that I was just talking to you about. If there would be no boundaries in tech, right? Everything is possible. What's the one thing you would fix for your role? We don't have enough time for a podcast for that. Um, one thing that we would fix, if technology were limitless, I would say that companies would be able to fix their trust issues relatively quickly through the push of a button. Mm -hmm. because honestly we don't like dealing with crisis and reputation we like talking about the good stories so i'd love to be able to find a way for companies to flip a switch and realize that their reputation really does matter mm -hmm. what's the last thing that kept you awake at night about the company um honestly making sure that we're continuously putting our best foot forward at all times um because not to sound like that flight attendant speech that you hear, we know that there's a bunch of choices out there in the public relations space. So we work really hard and have a really dogged, determined team uh, to make sure that, uh, that clients stay with us. And more importantly, that if they follow the formula of doing good work, they refer other companies to us and it keeps the cycle going. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to keep our lights on. Very good. And for the very last question, I would love to do a little bit of time travel with you, if you would allow. I would go back to the days of Ohio State, right? Going oh, back man, you did your homework, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what I would be curious is, right, if uh, you could give yourself one advice for your career in marketing and PR, uh, you know, talking to yourself the day after you finished at Ohio State, what's the one thing you would tell yourself? Listen. Listen to more people. Don't just hear. 
uh, listening is a very underrated sense because listening leads to comprehension. Comprehension leads to understanding. When you're just graduating college, you think you know everything because you've spent all this time studying. But at the end of the day, you're just a newbie looking for a job and you just have to be scrappy. If I had been able to give myself a lecture in college, I would have said, dude, you got to listen better. Um, listen to what people are telling you. Listen to what people are saying to you and translate that into something that really matters um, as opposed to what you really want to communicate. And honestly, 25 plus years later, um, thankfully, I followed my advice. It just took a little bit later than I expected. <laughs> Very good. Mike, I really appreciate uh, you taking the time with us here today at uh, the Pathmonk Presents podcast. I want to give you uh, the very last word, right? So if uh, people would be forgetting all that we discussed about last, do you still get my audio? Yeah, perfect. No, it's just like, it's, I think my iPads are jinxed. I just don't know what the problem is, but they're here. <laughs> <laughs> very good. So if, uh, if uh, somebody would be forgetting all that we discussed today in the Pathmonk Presents podcast, what's the one thing that they should remember about Blast PR? Um, that we are in the business of helping to manage, enhance, and protect the company's trust and reputation. And honestly, no matter what you sell on a given day, whatever you're trying, what your technology solves, um, you can't have that without having the trust of your clients on the other side. And that's what we help you build. Thanks a lot for being a guest on Pathfinder Presents. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. <laughs>